Okay. So, I'm a music teacher here in California, and I've got um, many band students at home telling me that it's hard for them to play at home because they're disturbing the household. Too darn loud is the complaint. So, um, whether it's a sibling distance learning or a baby sleeping, hopefully this is a tool that can help them be able to play in a situation where they couldn't. It takes about five, ten minutes to make. I can make it out of things readily available around the household. So, um, let me show you how to do this, and maybe you can make one for yourself. Let's get started. Tip the camera down so you can see my workspace. And I joked with the kids that this is their personal practice equipment, their PPE for pandemic learning. Um, I'm using a piece of cardstock, and it's um, if you don't have that, uh, you could cut a panel out of a cereal box. You could um, use a file folder or a, just a, a you know ten cent folder from Target. Um, I even stacked up three or four layers of paper and um, and rolled those together, and that seemed to work as well. So. Um, don't need to go buy anything special to make this mute. Hopefully all these things are already at home. And I need some tape and a pair of scissors, and and that's about it. So here I've kind of just rolled up. You saw how I did that. Rolled up a cone that approximates. This is my, my performance mute, and I'm um, just trying to approximate that cone. Um, and I'll throw some more tape on here just to hold it in place. And... Um, this is not by any means a, a performance mute or anything like that, just a, a tool to reduce the volume significantly when you're playing at home and um, give a young player an opportunity to play when, when they maybe couldn't otherwise. So I'm going to start in here where, where the, the V is. You can see that, that fold, and I'm just going to try to make that a straight, a straight cut around the, the bottom here as I can. And see if it lines up at the other side and if it doesn't we'll trim a little bit more the goal is that this is long enough that i can still grab it when it's stuck in the bell but um i would make it longer if the card sock were larger but it's not and this seems to work just fine so there we go there's our cone and i'm going to next step we're going to put a bottom on it this is just a piece of, of cardboard we had some chromebook boxes out in the um hallway when I was walking by the other day, so I grabbed one and just for the material here. So I like cardboard at the bottom. It gives the mute a little bit more strength and stability. You could certainly use another piece of that cereal box, or you could use um, use anything else that you want to. Again, the cardboard just seems to give it a little bit more stability. And hopefully this will be a fairly durable thing. I'm gonna gonna cut that out now. Um, don't know exactly how long they last, but again, the investment's so minimal and the time is, you know, not too long. And they're kind of, kind of fun. I like arts and crafts. And so I like making things. And so hopefully it's a win-win. Get to do all of those things at the same time here. And just come on around. And the idea is that this is just going to fit inside of the bottom of that cone. So let's see. Yeah, it fits pretty good. I'm going to take just a little bit more off this side over here. Again, I've made it quite a few of these, and the proportions don't seem real important. Um, they're all a little bit different, and so don't stress over you know, exactly how big is this supposed to be or how long is that. I'm just making making it work. There we go. That fits nicely inside there. And so next step is I'm just going to throw a couple pieces of tape on the on the bottom here, and we're going to stick that in here, get it to fit, and tape it down. So here we go. Get away from me a little bit. Come over to the side here. And there we go, perfect. So that fit down inside there. If yours doesn't, just pull it back out and and try again. So now I stick another piece of tape on. I'm just pulling that, and I want to pull that tight to the to the edge of the of the cone. And if you're getting a little bit of a buzz when you get your mute done, probably because of air escaping here at this edge. And so um, if you can see a little gap, just throw a little bit more tape on it. So if 
for now, gonna, for the sake of time, you see what I'm doing here. I'll call that a good fit for now. And if it needs more tape at the end, I can I can certainly do that. Okay, so we're almost done. There we go. Um, next step is I need to cut a couple one inch strips of, uh, of paper here. And I'm gonna fold that in half. And roll that up. I fold it in half just because it goes faster. That way I'm um, only rolling half as long. And the idea is that we wind up with about a one inch, one inch long cylinder that has maybe the diameter of a pencil or a little bit less. I'm going to throw a piece of tape on there. These are going to become the corks or the spacers around the mute. It's important with the mute if you stick the cork in the um, the the mute in there without the spacers, again, you're plugging the sound. It's really stuffy and not a lot of fun to play. Again, the goal with these is that the um, that they blow pretty freely. And we're trying to just take out enough of the sound that you still can enjoy playing the instrument, but maybe not disturb the neighbors or wake a baby. So you know, just do one more of these. And I have one already made from before. So three of them will get us through and um, and we're done. So. And again, if this doesn't doesn't work out for you, just try it again, and uh, and a little experimentation. I'm sure you'll sure you'll get it. I got one more chunk of tape on here, and then I like to use um, I use painter's tape. You wouldn't need to necessarily um, use whatever you've got, but if I need to reposition the corks, and on several mutes it didn't quite play the way I wanted it to. And just by repositioning or realigning the corks or the spacers here, I can I can get that um, get it to blow a little bit better. So let's zip around here, and we'll throw all three of these on. And I got one more set aside right here. Actually, I should use the blue tape. I also tell my students that. I use blue tape because I'm sad they're not here in my band room playing with me. So a um, little pandemic humor here, too. So again, well, and there you go. I mean, we can stick it in and see how it works. And if it needs adjusted, we can play around with that a little bit. So that's the same. I mean, you trust me on that. I'm using the same intensity of air, and um, and you can see how much that reduces reduces the volume. So hope that works for you. Um, leave me a comment down below if you like, and hope you enjoy the video. And if you do, subscribe, smash a like for me, and um, have a great day and good practicing.